Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. It's great to be here today. It's great to have you with us. Is this the first time you've seen the program? Well, we like to deal with things that really affect the home. And so I'm sure you have a home somewhere, and so I'm glad that you could join us today. I often get emails and letters and stuff that say, I just discovered the program, so welcome aboard. We are so glad to have you and to connect with you this way. We cover a lot of subjects on this program and some on a regular basis, a regular monthly basis. And we do talk about education, mostly public education, every month with Heidi Janssen. And I met her uh, a few short years ago, two or three years ago perhaps, where she had done a lot of research on Common Core and I saw a video of her addressing an audience about it and I thought, we need her. Well, since that time, uh, she comes on every month, but also she is now an, a, a substitute teacher in the public school. And I'll tell you why this is so good, because she moves around a lot. So she knows she's not just in one classroom every day. She knows what's going on. And there's a couple of things we want to talk about today, but one of them is the unbelievable way the, the schools and for kids at a very young age are teaching about transgenderism. I'm sorry, but I think the whole world's gone nuts sometimes, but we're going to address that to let you know what's happening there. And I'm going to join Stephanie for an oat apple crisp, and then when you get it out of the oven, you put a scoop of vanilla ice cream on it, and heaven's come down. So it smells awfully good. I'm sure it'll taste every bit as good as it smells. Before I join her, though, I uh, haven't offered you this for a while, but we do have some more of them. This little love bracelet, it's pretty small, but we call it the love bracelet because it has some scripture on it from 1 Corinthians 13. It actually has the words engraved, love is patient and love is kind. I think most of us need to be reminded of that every once in a while, except for Stephanie, of no, course. Daily. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, if you want one, uh, call 1-800-229-0059 for those credit card orders or uh, the address is on your screen. If you write to us, uh, we will be glad to get it out to you. And now I have joined Stephanie over here. Yes. You know what? I had a nice uh, surprise this week. Mm -hmm. uh, my son has been a pastor in Montgomery, Alabama for 26 years. And it's just far enough away that you don't yes. get together. Very yes. So he calls and said, Mom, we're coming through. I said, come right on. And uh, we went out to eat which is That's always the fabulous. best. I got a picture <laughs> of us out there. Ah, oh, look. Yeah, uh, just leave it there for a minute, Gary, because you know that you, they talk about Jewish mothers and Italian mothers, mm -hmm. and we maneuver. I'm not Jewish or Italian, but mothers You're do a maneuver. You're Christian mother, yeah. So I said, Caleb, you get over here and sit by me so that Michael and his sister can sit together. Because they're fun together and they laugh a lot. So they're that siblings yeah. together, yeah. <laughs> so that's my grandson, and then that's me, and that's Chris, my son-in-law, and my daughter and my son and Terry and that beautiful little girl decide is staying with them for a few weeks. My son's done a lot of missionary work in Russia. Mm -hmm. She's from Siberia. Wow. And speaks better English than I do. Right. <laughs> but it was delightful to have her in the home. Then I got a picture of just the two of us Aww. and I got to tell you a story there. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, America is so much <laughs> different than Siberia, I'm sure. Yeah. And someone sent me a box of tea, beautiful, beautiful. A fabulous, fancy box of and tea. And there was no name. I have no idea who to uh, thank for that. So I was showing it to her, and I've taken quite a bit of tea out of it. And she was so intrigued with that box. Yeah. So the next morning, I took a bunch of tea out that I want. I gave it to her. You thought I'd given her a gold mine. And then they were going to take her to Disney, and I handed her $10. I said, you go buy yourself a souvenir. And she hugged me. She said, this is just like Christmas. Right? Oh, okay, so Americans. A thankful, grateful heart. Yes, mm -hmm. and that we don't know what we have. Mm -mm. Not at all. Mm -mm. So it was a wonderful, wonderful evening. How wonderful. So I wonder how she did at Disney. I'm sure she had an amazing time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, that was what I was doing. I just, boy, when I can get everybody around the table. And, it's the best. And, and you know, the um, 
the waiters and said, would you please take a picture? They have to do it all the time. Yeah. This guy was good. If you notice the angle, he goes, yeah, go high. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So great time. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. So I have seven cups of apples that I have sliced, peeled and sliced. Mm -hmm. We're just going to leave those there for a minute. We are out of spray, Pam. Okay, we ran out. So Arthleen's going to take some cooking oil and a paper towel, and she's just going to wipe the pan. You down talk for about us. a learning experience. This is what we do, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we have sugar, cinnamon, salt, and flour that you're going to mix together for me. This is really pretty healthy, actually. Uh, we we I'm always cut the sugar way back anyway, but uh, the apples and the oatmeal mm -hmm. and all. Yeah. So, so I have a yellow cake mix. I have three quarter cup oats, a third of a cup of butter, a fourth of a cup of brown sugar, and a quarter teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda. The apple's going first, right? The apple's going first. Okay. Yes. And this is a um, two and, and a half Granny quart. Smith. Yep, and two and a half quart pan. Okay. And then just just sprinkle this stuff over it. All this. Oh, not, uh, oh, no, I mix yeah, this you're up. Mix. Okay. You let me tell you what to do, okay? You just don't take off and do your own thing. It Mix is, those all together for me. It is me. true. I, I, do need, I do need direction. That's okay, so that was the yellow cake mix. This is the oats. No offense. I'm not being bossy. No offense taken at all. Okay, good, because we're friends, and that's what friends do. Yes. And this is baking um, powder and baking soda. Okay, so we just mix this up, and then I have some softened butter here that I'm going to mix up in here. And mix it all together. This is so super simple. I'm gonna make this and ha send it to my husband. Send uh, to the hunt camp with my husband. That's how yeah. good, how easy it is. And I have apples just sitting at home. So, okay. Do you think I should put more sugar in there? No, that's good. I mean, you know, that's a lot of sugar. Yeah, uh, we. Since I read an article that you can really cut back sugar she about read it 50 on the internet, percent, so it has to be. It true. has to be true. Let's uh, see. Okay, so you're scooping that, and then I have a quarter cup of water here, and you're just going to drizzle that over. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I mean, somebody out there gets very, very creative with these cake mixes. Yes. We have another one coming up soon that I can't wait. Yeah. Pumpkin. I'll tell you the truth. We've got a recipe coming up on another show that Stephanie strongly disapproves of. I will smile through the whole episode. So I said, the then whole the next show will fix your show. Thank your you. Yes, yes. So we picked. I picked a pumpkin dump cake to make up for the. Because we are very democratic. Accommodating. Around. Yes. Okay. So here's a quarter cup of water. Oh, okay. If you'll just drizzle that over. And then I'm just going to pour this over the top, and that's it. You don't mix it together. You just leave it on top, and then you bake it. You bake it for it better than that for 45 to 50 minutes. Oh, I was wondering where the ice cream went. <laughs> that was the ice cream. <laughs> I was looking for it. It wasn't in the freezer. Yeah. So you just pour this over the top. You bake it for about 50 minutes at 350. That's it. You don't have to. No more mixing. Just pour Ooh. it over the top. Oh. You can see where that bubbled through there. Oh my, my husband goodness. loves, loves, loves apple pie. So he's gonna love this recipe, and I figure it would be great now, for hunt camp. Now, is there any way that he can heat it up? Oh, yeah. We have an oven. <laughs> well, I've never uh, gone hunting. Oh, so. we're in a camper, so we have oh. all of the amenities of I life. I used the wrong I thing. I wouldn't go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would oh. not be going if we were in a tent. Can I help you? Can I help you that while you lift your That tastes like fingers? wonderful oh, apple look. pie. Yummy. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay. I don't even, like, this is going up to my office. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else. Well, just um, me. Okay, you go. It's we're going to eat this the rest of the show, so enjoy. Yes. So you, yeah. yeah, I'll be standing right here while you're interviewing mm. Miss Heidi. Mm. Oh, my word. Have we ever made anything any better than that? Besides Stephanie's cake? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, friend, that oh. is really the fresh apples. And they're, they're granny, this, they're granny Smith, heavenly. but they're, yeah. Mm. Do you know what else is happening today? I do. Very huge. I know. Today is Heidi's birthday. Yay! Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear Heidi. Oh, so Happy 
happy birthday to you. Now, I don't care what your husband has oh, planned. Thank you this so is, much. This and you so notice we spare no expense. expense. We will cut cake. this into 10 pieces and we will shoot. No. <laughs> That's yours to take. That's so sweet. Well, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Oh, I yeah. love you all. So 29, much. right? Yeah, yeah. 29. Yeah. I, know it, I knew yeah, it. 35, 33. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, that yeah. sounds somewhere <laughs> in there. All so right. Happy birthday. Oh, it's so wonderful. Uh, we, we strongly recommend this recipe. It's called um, Oat Apple Crisp, right? Oat Apple Crisp. That yeah. Looks great. And uh, the information is coming up on your screen as to how you can attain it. Uh, and you can get it there. You can get it through the social media or you can write to us. So pay attention to this message. And then uh, Heidi and I are going to sit down and talk about our public education, a lot of things that people really need to know. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Yeah, uh, let me say something about uh, if you write in for a recipe, we really do need you to send us an envelope with your address on it and a stamp. But also, sometimes people will send one about an envelope about that big, you know, and request a whole bunch of recipes, can't get them all in there, and then they have a problem with the post office and all. So uh, I just want you to know that there are a few little, a few little bugs there. Uh, email is the best, but if you don't have it, we'll be glad to get it to you this other way. Okay, well, happy birthday, girl. Thank you. Uh, what we did was so great that I don't care what your husband does tonight. <laughs> No way he can surpass a, a cake like that. So, so cute. Thank Glad you. to have you on your bed. All right. Last, since, last, uh, since you were here last time, we've talked a lot about Common Core. And I went on uh, some sites yesterday, and boy, they present this like it's candy canes on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. And yep. the horror stories we've heard from children and parents alike. Yeah. Is there any turning back on it? You know, there is. Uh, the, the problem that we're seeing now is that we are a few years removed from when it first hit. So mm -hmm. the tidal wave hit, parents were engaged. Um, they protested that we worked really hard to bring down Common Core uh, to voice what our objections were. They're all valid incredibly valid. Mm -hmm. uh, number one is you're not seeing the students succeed as much as they used to and for some reason our government thinks that's a good thing because they're thinking they're being more rigorous but what they're doing, what it still doesn't change the fact that Common Core is not age appropriate in the lower grades and now I'm you know we're kind of seeing it in middle school too uh, where those students are coming up and they haven't grasped the basics because they were whooshed through elementary school pushed you're talking about the through. basics that you and I learned yeah basics you know how to count and how <clears throat> to grasp c uh, concepts that um, are pretty concrete but because of all the abstract stuff happening in Common Core these little minds cannot function that way because they're not developed yet so what we're seeing now is the elementary uh, or the every student succeeds act which was uh, the, the, the <clears throat> bill that replaced uh, No Child Left Behind it was actually the reenactment of it it was uh, yeah anyway that says now that states have the, the possibility, they have the authority to remove Common Core now. They're no longer bound by the federal oh. government or the carrot that they dangled over uh, in front the of money. them, the money, uh, to, to keep Common Core in place. But now we know, and they knew, that if it's in place for a few years, why should they remove it at a very high cost when there's no more money coming to to change yeah. it. So now Always all the money. <laughs> you know, curriculum has changed. They've printed all the books. Uh, the teachers have the materials in hand. So why would they now come and change standards that everybody has gotten used to? Even though they're bad, 
People, the teachers have gotten and even though the used children are not learning. Right, but yeah. I will tell you, walking into a classroom as a substitute teacher on the board, every single board at our middle school, you'll have a section where it actually lists the standards M point S point one two point six. You are these are your learning goals. This is what you should be learning and should be able to do by the end of this quarter. So do you see? The standards are in the classroom on the whiteboards for the students to see. So if a student doesn't achieve those. And the standard could mean nothing to their overall life and productivity and gifts. I had a teacher tell me yesterday that they, are, they cannot give extra credit for students to bring up their, their, um, their grades because it doesn't fall within the standards. You see, if it's something outside of the standards, then they've given the, the child a second chance to achieve, and we can't do that. Mm -hmm. But they're bound by the state. Well, this is the information I got that might make you choke if you want to take this tea here. <laughs> Maybe. Number one, they said it was research and evidence-based lie. It, it wasn't even put together by educators people of education. No, and it was never field tested. Well, the, mm -hmm. the FSA, the Florida Standards Assessment, was never So evidence-based is a lie. Mm -hmm. Clear, understandable, and consistent. Ask any parent who's tried to help a child with their homework. Aligned with college and career expectations. How do we know? That, that hasn't been proven yet. How old is Common Core? Uh, 2009. Okay, so we don't know based on rigorous content and application of knowledge through higher order thinking skills, whatever that means. For the fourth grader. Yeah, we're gonna tap into our higher learning skills. Mm -hmm. Bil built upon the strengths of current state standards. Well, the strengths are not there. Really. No, they're not. And you're seeing it over and over again. You see the results of it now. And you're going to have more students dropping out of high school because they just can't, can't do it. Do you know that now, in order to be um, accepted to a college, you need to have your student, your child, to look. They have to look at what courses they are wanting to take or what they need to take in high school, in middle school. So in middle school, by seventh grade, you need to start planning, already prior to that, planning mm -hmm. what your child will be and should be taking in high school, which we did with math. Our children are both accelerated in math, so our, our son, who's in eighth grade now, is taking Algebra two, which is a 10th grade, 11th grade course. Mm -hmm. All right, Here, here's, the, here's the click. Informed by other top performing countries in order to prepare all students for success in our global economy and society. That the whole world will just, you know, you're not an American, you're not that, you're just a person of the world. This is troublesome, very troublesome. And your Christian schools mm -hmm. and your home schools um, are growing yep. to, to uh, get out of this. So we, we want to inform you of what's going on. And so if parents and grandparents are struggling to help with the homework, mm -hmm. we've just given them the reason. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Here's the, here's the biggest thing is that your children are not failures. They're, every child thinks in a different way. And this is a cookie cutter system. Yeah. You know, you've got this everything lined up that you have to fall within these categories and you have to achieve these certain things by this certain mile marker and I get it because teachers have lesson plans but I'm like where is grace where where is well also I think the scariest thing is that from kindergarten on you're in the system you're tracked yeah so a child could come through common core from kindergarten or whatever they hit 12th grade they're interested in this, this, but according to their little records, you're not qualified <coughs> to do that. It, cr it cuts out all creativity. To me, it cuts out what direction does God want this person right. going to? Well, what we've also done and we've seen now, uh, because of there's been so much 
focus on technology and digital learning and and being uh, so tech savvy now we've backed off of all of our blue collar yeah labor you know all the 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 skilled laborers and there is a shortage mm -hmm. there are people who can't do linemen work or uh, engineering uh, not engineering necessarily uh, but structural engineering who can actually work mm -hmm. on on projects they're recruiting the builders association in tampa is recruiting young students high schoolers mm -hmm. to into their fold so that they can apprentice them yeah that that's one great thing about America, <laughs> she can, she can find ways. But this is huge when when the whole uh, country has adopted this kind of thing. We might have to get in on some of this next time. But they are planting into kindergarten mm -hmm. kindergartners the idea of uh, choosing what sex you want to be. So, that, Heidi, this is from the Rockland Academy schools in Sacramento, a kindergarten teacher was teaching about transitioning from a boy to a girl, kindergartners. And uh, so there's a young student in there where he wanted to be a girl and she used him as a, and I guess the parents were in on it too, sent him out of the room, had him come back in dressed like a girl. They said the other students were so shaken, some of them were crying, and they said the next school board meeting was packed out. Why do they shove this? Why is this in That's, education that at That is all? something that should never be never. done in a safe public school. Safe. Any grade. Any grade. Any grade. There's some things parents are supposed to teach. Well, there's, it, you know, there's, a lot of ideology from some teachers who might feel that way. Now we're talking about the West Coast, which tends to be more liberal. Now this is Sacramento, California. We haven't seen this in Florida, to my knowledge, but that's something that's that that's that should be left to the parents. Should never enter in a classroom, mm -hmm. and other students should not be coerced to to take on mm -hmm. these kind of beliefs. If they're talking about separation of church and sta state, and there's so many people who are adamant about that, mm -hmm. well, I, you know, you're proselytizing there too. Don't you think just the power of suggestion? Yes. Uh, you take a, a kindergarten or maybe somebody in middle school, that power of suggestion and maybe things aren't right at home or something, there's maybe been some kind of a trauma even, and say, get this idea planted in their head. Mm -hmm. And that power of suggestion is exactly what it is. Very, very powerful um, in, um, it is. in many subjects. Um, said, uh, to quote this, uh, children were emotionally bothered and traumatized by this uh, demonstration and, and crying, am I going to turn into a girl? And uh, that the idea is that you can pick your gender and one pediatric expert was very strong he said this is psychological abuse and it is it is it is there, that should never enter into any group setting that's something that's personal and i'll tell you Arthelene, here's my thought on it and just dealing with um, students in middle school and all of the the hormonal changes and the things that are going on and you know they may be resistant to who they were born as um, just because they don't like that part of their their whole physiology, but to love them where they're at individually, and we as Christians, we will love them into the kingdom. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You have got to develop those personal relationships with these very impressionable young people if they don't have that at home. And I... One of the greatest compliments and just the thing that touches me so much is for parents to come to me and tell me, my son said, or my daughter said, that you are their favorite substitute of all time. I'm just like, you know, I'm that's not surprised. So that's wonderful. To me. That is so beautiful to me. Yeah. You know, if they're going to teach them this, teach them also uh, that those who had had the surgery to change, the suicide rate is 19 times higher uh, than the other uh, ways of measuring. And uh, more requesting reverse surgery, as one called it, 
a trend of regret. I knew that years ago, I believe it's Johns Hopkins, stopped, I bet 15 years ago at least, stopped doing these at all. The percentage of regret is very, very high. Um, so while we've got people in our school system saying, you know, maybe this is you and oh, it's wonderful and all, if you're going to do it, give them the whole story. Tell them, tell them the percentage of regret. Tell them the suicide rate and all. But back to the beginning, it has no place in our schools. It shouldn't even be there. I don't think those young minds can process that. They just can't. They're, they don't have the life knowledge to make that kind of a decision that affects the rest of who they're going to be. I would like to meet the person. Oh, I'd love to meet you who thought it would be a good idea to teach this in kindergarten. Yeah. It's, it's diabolical. I wonder if it was a, the, all on that teacher, and I wonder how many kindergarten teachers would be just as aghast as we are. Well, I would hope so. Me too. I would hope so. Um, but the reason that Heidi comes on with us every month um, is the fact that we can talk about things that parents need to know about. There are some things, and we're almost out of time, but there are some things they don't want parents to know. It is purposeful. There are a lot of things on campus that parents have no idea are even going on, or they may think that, that their children are tremendously uh, angelic, but they just don't, they're not involved enough to know exactly what their child is into and so you know that's why I'm on campus yeah I like to know I want to know I need to know and I'm glad you bring it to us but uh, the interesting thing is we just have a couple seconds but there are things that the administration purposely keeps from the parents and that's why we would uh, like very much to keep you informed and when I think of the scripture train up a child in the way that he should go Common Core doesn't work there. No, it doesn't. Children are, they're individuals. They're all different, and God has an individual plan for them. And so parents have a bigger job than they used to. That's right, they do. Yeah, they and do. And they, they cannot have, resign themselves to let it go. Yeah. They have a lot, they have a lot more to consider today. So you parents, grandparents, uh, this is for you, and we should be praying for our public school system and for each child in it. Sorry we're out of time, but join me next time. Please remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.